Hey! Hey folks, Gregory Cockery here. Justin from Fender. And you know what? It is NAM 2020, as the brochure says. And we're checking out some new uh, beautiful offerings from the Fender Custom Shop. We're just talking about some Seth Lover pickups. Yeah, yeah, the, the Kunafe pickups. So Say that again. Other, uh, wide range. I got you. In layman's terms, we know it as a wide range pickup. Right. Um, but it, it's the original Fender humbucker. Right. Um, what's cool about these, so this 70s Tele Custom, which is one of my favorites. The Keith Richards special. Yeah, well, it's just like, I dig these old school, like it's yep. the four knobs, you know, it's really classic. So we paired the humbucker with the 500K pots on the volume and tone. Okay. And we found that it really, that was the resistance it wanted to see. So when you flip up here, you know, you're getting like a real hot humbucker tone. Right. As opposed to some of the vintage ones, they're kind of like muffled because Got it. I think they were using one make pots back then. So it was like, it wasn't really what the pickup wanted to see. So these guitars rip. We have this one. We also have the double humbucker over here, 72 Tele Thin Line. And these things rip as well. Beautiful. 500K pots, Kunafe pickups, maple neck, lacquer head cap. It's a little bit darker. This one's in aged white blonde. Really cool. We don't typically do 70s stuff in the collection, but this year we're doing some, some cool stuff. I dig it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Something new. So Time Machine over here, um, essentially what, I mean, what we see it as is like, if you check out the guitar from a distance, you're like, Okay, that's a 56 Strat. Right. Right? Dead nuts like that. That's where the decal should be. That's the right pick guard with the right amount of screws. But underneath the hood, we have modern wiring. Modern ergonomics. Ergonomia wiring. We've got a tone pot that goes on the bridge, unlike a vintage. You right. know, the fretboard radius is a 9.5 typically on the time machine as got opposed it. to vintage. Sometimes the frets are a little bit thicker. So what you get is a really playable cool 56 Strat Dig it. that with the vintage vibe and vintage feel that we relic, but that, you know, plays and sounds like you want it to. I so like it. this 56 Strat here, very nice aged three-tone sunburst and single ply parchment pick guard. We've got fat 50s pickups, right? which actually we found that the fat 50s are very similar to what the original 50s pickups, the DC resistance, the tone. So I, I had them in one of my guitars for years, and I loved it. If you want a good 50s sound. Fat 50s are good. Fat 50s are good. This is, has a fat 50s wiring as well. Okay. Which is achieved by wiring the tone pot to the output lug of the volume okay. uh, pot. And basically it creates more of an interactive, uh, juicy, fat tone. I like juice. Yeah. I like succulents. So there you go. 56 Strat. Beautiful. I have one of those. Bob got, I had one of the, when Custom Shop first started making the relics, I had a 56. I, I found it somewhere in Chattanooga and I, I got to have this thing. I was out doing a clinic some doggone place. So I, it looks very much like my old one. Because I, I wanted the guitar on the back of the Derek and the Dominos record. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Had to have it. Absolutely. And that's two, two tone sunbursts. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, beautiful guitar. So, this is the 60th anniversary of the jazz Ooh, bass. Oh, dig it. So we figured we'd do a 1960 jazz bass, right? Beautiful. Concentric knobs, uh, stacked volume and tone. Comes with the covers on there. Right. First thing I do is I take the covers off, though, when I get it right. home and slap it around. Right. And take it through its paces. It does look cool with the covers on, though, doesn't it? It does look really nice, huh? But they do have to come off if you want to wield it. Right. So this one, 9.5 uh, radius, medium jumbo frets. It's got this really cool nitrous tortoiseshell pickguard on Looks there, great. lacquer finish, and we leave the finish off the back of the uh, off of the neck for super smooth play. Dig it. And this is Sherwood green, is it? This is an aged Sherwood green metallic. Dig it. Yeah, beautiful. Pretty cool. I like it. You should check out uh, the vintage custom. Yes. If you want to cruise around, I don't know how much time you guys want. We got to spend, all the but... time in the world, by Jimmy. Okay. So this is one of my favorites here. Esquire. 1950 Pine Esquire. Oh, it probably weighs nothing, right? Yeah. Oh, nice. So this thing has no truss rod, which I think makes the tone incredible and super resonant. You right. don't have that hole going down the middle of the neck. Right. 
two-piece uh, sandwich-style pine. So one piece on top of the other, super lightweight, no truss rod, one pickup. We gave this a full throttle Esquire wiring, okay. which is my personal favorite. Um, essentially what you have is in position three here up on the top, you've got volume and tone. Right. Flip it here into the middle and it's just, just the volume. volume. So it cuts the tone out of the, the circuit. Right. And it opens it up a little bit more, it gives it a little bit more chunk. Right. And then this. It's just full Monty, it's right? Full out, yeah. yeah. So you're familiar with oh, it. Oh yeah. Um, so this one's really cool. It's got a 50-51 Blackguard hand-wound pickup. Nice. Um, so, yeah, just really cool. That's why are glorious. Super simple. Right. Um, I think in terms of, like, for me, the, the simpler you you keep it, the more you get out of it. Right, absolutely. Because it leaves more in the... In the hands, hands of the digits. In the digits, yeah. And in the deviant mind of the manipulator. If I have too many knobs and, and switches and stuff, I like, can't stop fiddling with it. Right, it's like, exactly. if I could just like leave it in one place, turn Set. it up, True. then it's True all good. that. Yeah. Uh, so, Mahogany 68 Tele Thin Line. Cool. NOS, this is a flash coat lacquer. Both of these, NOS flash coat lacquer with closet classic hardware. So what you achieve is a guitar that looks like it is new out, out of the box, but it's maybe been sitting in the case for 50 years. So the, the hardware is slightly tarnished on here. Actually, this one, this is the Closet Classic. This has NOS hardware. Got it. But uh, this one's really cool. This is kind of what you would look, if you look in the Telecaster book, you look up a 68 Tele thin line, they'll have a picture of this with the mahogany body. It's got a riffs on tinted maple neck, round that maple fingerboard. And both of these have a vintage compound radius. Okay. So seven and a quarter down low, up to nine five as you get to the higher registers. Cool. We actually found some vintage guitars, Fender, um, the Fender Lore that had the compound vintage okay. radius. And that was cool. We think it was an accident. Ah. Whoever was doing the, ra you know, fretboard radius, maybe, because it was never documented. Got it. But we found them and they exist. They're out there. So That's it's kind of like the, 1056V, you know, or like right. V shape. I think it was an accident at first. Right. But then it caught on and they started doing it. So we started doing this, you know, only, you know, seven like years it. later. I can dig it. Yeah, right on. So I, you want to talk about the broadcasters? We could skip over there. Yeah, let's or? do that. Let's okay. go to broadcaster. Although, let's talk about the old Isabella. Is this a, wait, this is okay, this so different, right? This is a limited edition Jimi Hendrix. Stratocaster, otherwise known as Isabella. Uh, so this one is limited to 250 guitars worldwide. Um, it comes with all this cool stuff. You get the booklet, which is really cool. Uh, this scarf, which actually is made handmade in New York, and a uh, cool strap that he played at Woodstock, coiled cable. And essentially, it's exactly the same guitar as what he played at Woodstock. We went up to the museum in Seattle and shot like 300 pictures of the relicking front and back and matched it exactly. Um, got hand wound 69 pickups in there, seven and a quarter radius, vintage frets. We've got the uh, Schaller F style tuning machines, only we strung it right handed. Got it. You know, if you're a lefty, you go ahead and. Yeah, you can do what you gotta flip do. Flip it over, you right. know? I always find it amazing, you know, looking at old films of Hendrix playing, you know, and he puts his arm around the side, he's got all the controls and the cable right. up here. I'm like, yeah. and, he's and still he liked it that way, but I don't know, it's weird. ripping it, you know, and so, Jim. pretty amazing stuff. Excellent, well, let's, talk, right. let's talk about this glorious assemblage of weaponry. Yes, so, uh, this is uh, 2020. We are in the year of the broadcaster. It's a celebration year, so. Tele I'm sorry. <laughs> it was going to happen, but I caught myself. That was pretty good. So, uh, yeah, 70th anniversary of the broadcaster. Uh, we did it actually in four different finishes. So we've got an NOS flash coat lacquer, closet classic hardware. We've got a journeyman relic, a relic, and a heavy relic. And journeyman's over here, relic, heavy relic. And then master built version, limited to 70 guitars. Uh, this one's master built by Dennis Galuska. Custom, Galusk. custom heavy relic to the Galusk specification. Yes. He's got the bridge cover relic, which I think is really classy and cool. Awesome. 
So essentially what you have is, I mean, these are all broadcasters, but they're kind of like if you, you walk into a vintage store and you pick, you know, they have a bunch of broadcasters hanging on the wall. They, none of them look the same. You right. know? Some of them have this like dirty, dark, you know, headstock that right. was, whoever played it was, you know, a heavy smoker or whatever. Right. And then you'll see ones that are just like stark white, you know, there's right. like no tint on them at all. And some of them have like the shelf on the side, you know, and the, the volutes are different and each one's a little different. So we kind of tried to simulate that. Um, and essentially you're getting what you would have gotten back then. So. It's a vintage compound radius, um, 21 medium vintage frets. We've got hand wound 5051 Blackguard pickups. This is a modded no caster wiring. Okay. So this is the original wiring. Essentially what it is, when you're in the bridge position, you've got volume and then a blender. So oh, this, that's right. This blends yeah, yeah, in yeah. the neck, which is really cool and, and super useful. Um, in the middle position, you've got the neck pickup um, with the volume, Got it. just volume neck pickup, which brightens up the neck pickup and makes it very usable sure. um, for rhythm and soloing, whatever your bag is. And then you flip it up here, nor traditionally it would, have, it would be a cap and a resistor right. that just rolls everything off. Right. So we lightened the load and we took a little bit less, we took a lot less off. So it rolls off just a little bit of the highs. So what you're getting is, you know, you're here in the neck pickup with the volume and it's it's fairly bright, you know, for a traditional telly tone. Flip it up here and it rolls just a little bit off so it makes it nicer for chords and Got rhythm it. playing, that sort of cool. thing. So, and if that's not your thing, we actually ship a Fat 50s control assembly in the case. So if you're not digging the wiring, you just Go to traditional solder two yeah. wire, wires and uh, it pop it It does the normal there. thing. Yeah. Got it. So it's pretty cool. It's just, this is limited edition just for 2020. And, you know, all the orders we take will build. I love it. Um, so, yeah, very cool stuff. We're super I love these broadcasters. About it. Yeah. And we've got the artisan behind it if you want to check that yeah, out. Yeah, let's check that out. Okay. So, what I love about the artisan series is that it's not just amazing looking wood. I mean, they're very gorgeous guitars. I mean, I mean look at it. The first thing is like you're drooling, right? right. Because it's just this exotic wood. You know, you've got the dark ebony fretboard with the pearl uh, fret dots and the tortoiseshell buttons and everything. But what's cool about it is like, so the body and the neck is roasted. Oh, I got which, you. Which, as you know, it, I dig dr it dries out the wood a little bit and it makes it more resonant, a little bit lighter sometimes, darker in color. But also, when you plug that in, the tone is, I mean, you hear a noticeable difference. Right. I do. And on top of that, these all have compound radius, modern uh, fingerboard radius. So 9.5 to 12 inch radius. Okay. We've got 6105 frets. Um, and they all have uh, modern wiring with hand wound pickups. All the tellies have these um, RSD saddles on the vintage bridge. So it intonates perfectly. Sure. It sounds great. It plays great. It looks amazing. And as you can see, I mean, we've got a nice assortment of woods on the tellies on the left up there. That's we've got that teardrop, wide fade, two tone sunburst with a triple A flame maple top. It's beautiful. That one's got a parchment guard with the white buttons, which I think is really cool. Yes. All the other ones have the tortoise shell nitrous uh, guards. Got it. Yep. Um, we've got on the, the tellies maple burl top, quad A koa top, strats. We've got a spalted maple top, which is really beautiful, uh, 4A koa top, and then a 4A maple burl top. So some really cool assortments. Um, other They're glorious. Than, yeah, glorious. And the P90s, you got to love that too. Right. So those are the artisans. Um, beautiful specimens. Were, yeah. So very cool stuff. Excellent. Yeah. Or and should we... Uh, if there's one other base I wanted you to check out. Let's do that. If you want to take, Absolutely. take a look at it. Okay. All right, so 66 J bass. Oh, there we go. So being that it's the 60th anniversary of the jazz bass, we thought we'd add an extra one, just a little icing on the cake. So see, looking at the black one, this is pretty, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, so. That's pretty stunning. We were flipping through um, a vintage guitar, vintage bass book 
I was looking with our, our newest master builder, Vincent Ventrite. And we're just checking out all these old bases. I'm like, oh man, this one's really cool. He's like, you should do one, you know, for the collection. So I was like, well, it is the 60th anniversary of the J base. Let's, let's do it up, you know? So what I love about this, I mean, everything about it, but I think the way it ties together, you've got the binding right. block inlays, uh, matching painted head cap with these lollipop tuners. And I'm not necessarily a painted head cap kind of guy. But right, like, but it, look, it works. Something about this, like when you're flipping through the book, you're like, oh, wow, like look at all those. Like, right. They always group them together, you know, like the classic colors, you know. So we did these in three colors for the collection, uh, H black, H Daphne blue. Right, and see then, the Daphne blue, that's another glorious tone here. Oh my goodness gracious. So those are pretty cool. We have a ton of other stuff amongst, you know, 400 other custom NAM guitars that we brought out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, hey, yeah. let's, let's talk, talk about, about this. We're talking about the Rocky right. guitar, right. ladies and gents. Look so at this thing. You can see the way that the lighting is, is kind of illuminating the guitars. The karmic wheel. So the legend, as it were, with, with this guitar, I don't know how familiar you are uh, with the, the history of it, but apparently the, the Beatles were in the studio and they needed a couple strats so they weren't getting that sound. So Rhodey went out, came back with a couple of blue strats, and those guitars are all over rubber soul. Right. And I've, I can't remember the exact solo. Was it, uh, it escapes me now, but there's one solo that it, it will jump out. I'll remember it in a couple Yeah, seconds. I can't remember it either, but, but I know anyways, what you're talking about. But anyways, it's all over that album, and then all over a bunch of the stuff that George worked on, you know, throughout his career. And during uh, Sgt. Pepper's, I think they were doing experimentation with certain substances and painting things in psychedelic colors. As you do. Yeah. And so the guitar took on a new visual aspect, as you see. And as far as I know, this is poster paint that he got. And, you know, stripped the strings off and just went to town, you know. You got Go Cat Go on there, Beep Bop Lula. And then the headstock, I believe, is actually nail polish. Ah. So Patty's nail polish was, was used. used uh, and you'll see he donned the name Rocky on the headstock as well. So Paul Waller uh, was building 100 of these okay. total. Um, and they're all hand-painted by Pamelina. Okay. She's been working with the custom shop for over 30 years, and each one is is painstakingly exactly painted. Like the original. Just like the original. All the specs are original. So, you know, you've got hand-wound 60s pickups, and Abigail Ibarra came out of retirement to hand-wind oh, each did. one of them. Yes. So they that, brought her back. I, that, I think that's a huge uh, selling point for these. Not that, I mean... These are obviously going to be huge collector's items and, you know, legendary custom I wonder if this guitar guitars. and the Jimmy Page guitar got in a fight. Who would win? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. It'd that's, be a that's, great that's battle. a tough one. It'd be yeah. powerful. Well, uh, this display certainly, I think, takes the cake. Right now I'm seeing trails just I mean, by looking at this. Yeah, thing. yeah. We're going to go. We're Is gonna, that weird? We need to get some coffee and chill out. For Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. It's good for us. So, yeah, very cool. Very cool stuff. So that's the Rocky. Now let's go over and see the Prestige. All right. You fellas ready? Yes. So we're missing one Prestige. It's on its way here. Is it Prestige a worldwide, <laughs> perhaps? Prestige. Worldwide. <laughs> prestige. I can't resist. It's good stuff. I'm looking at this uh, Esquire over there that's been relic, the master belt version. I'm. It's filling me with a sense of lust. That is the Dale Wilson. That son Smoked, of a gun. no caster blonde. Ooh, I like that. Yes. My man. We'll have to go check that out afterwards. Hey. Okay, so let's start. Let's Carlos, do. Carlos Lopez. Look at it. So the Prestige, these are one of a kind, one off guitars that these guys build um, just for the NAM show. And they're kind of like just all out original. No creation. holds barred. No holds barred. Whatever you got, you know. So this one I think is really cool. Carlos Lopez, obviously one of our newest master builders, um, apprenticed for many years under Todd Krause. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, I think being Southern California native, 
wanted something that was going to be really cool to that sort of heritage, Hispanic heritage. So Dia de los Muertos themed sugar, sugar, toll, sugar skull strat, hand painted by Pamelina. And this thing is just badass. Um, it's basically hand painted on the neck and the body. Look at and that. Pick Holy yard. cow. Up and down. I tried. And this guitar is $450, if I'm not mistaken. $450.99. Look at that. Yes, it's that incredible. I mean, this just, uh, I think it speaks to the custom shop lore and just like combination of, you know, the builder, you know, collaborating with an artist that's been with us for so long. Giant yeah. skull. Really cool. That is beautiful. Okay, next up, Look at this another thing. one of our newest master builders, Vincent Van Trite. Uh, Sarah is... Gallenberger from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, my hometown. No way. Fist it. Hey, there you go. She painted it. I've heard good things about Wisconsin people. We do what we can. Yeah. Um, okay, so this one is really cool. Atomic base, um, hand-painted Sarah Gallenberger. Ron Thorne, another one of our master builders, oh, did, we know these, Ron well. did these inlays. Um, basically, it's all custom with the TV inlays. It's got a one-ply black phenolic pickguard, RSD deluxe base bridge. And then this is a Curtis Novak uh, Bisonic pickup. I'm really curious to see what this sounds like. Love to plug it, it in. It looks cool. One-off for That's Nan. badass. Beautiful. That's badass, as people like to say somewhere. Yes. Badass. Badass. We got another Esquire here. I'd always love to see it. India Garden Esquire. Yes. So this is Jason Smith, mm -hmm. uh, his prestige. Uh, it's basically a collaboration with uh, pyrography, py pyrography artist Man Madeline Hanlon. Um, basically, beautiful, detailed wood burning design. That's crazy. You can see with the India Garden theme. Imagine showing up at the Blues Jam with that, saying, hey, bitches, how about a little, how about a little hideaway? Exactly, right? You know what I'm saying? Am I right or am I right? And I love these knobs, Scott. too. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta check in every now and again. With... Check that Not out. only do I have Paul to harass, but I have Scott to harass today. I got two brothers, brothers of the video team. There you go. Look at you guys. Wow. That's beautiful. Madeline Hanlon. That is a fetching piece, so, so without it's a all, question. I, I had a wood-burning set when I was a kid, and I could never imagine doing something that beautiful. Yeah, that's that's pretty insane. Yeah. And then uh, got that beautiful bird's-eye roasted neck. Tortoiseshell control plate there. I like it. It's a stunning, stunning, Breath. stunning offering. Breathtaking. We got a Mr. Fessler, bird's eye, rose eye, top tail. Yeah. So, so I think if there's anything Greg Fessler, I was talking to him about this, and I was like, so what, what inspired you? And he's like, he's like, I don't know, man. It was just, it was cool. Like, I had a good piece of wood, and, you know, I put it together, and it looked really cool. So Sometimes the best things happen simply because they're cool. Yeah. Am I, I right or am I right? I, I mean, you know, Greg is a... Uh, not a man of many words. He just does cool stuff, you know? And some of the coolest guitars I've seen at the NAMM show have been from Greg. Yes. And he doesn't have a lot to say about it. He's just like, I just did it, because it's yes. cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can't really see it in those piece, light right? boxes there. That's yeah. a substantive neck. Wow. Yes. Bird's eye. It's kind of a rosewood, rosewood offering in the back. Beautiful roasted ash back with the tortoise shell binding. Behold. A gorgeous maple fretboard. This is the kind is of it, guitar my it? wife likes to buy me. Never. But I <laughs> thought I'd throw it out there into the universe. Universe. That is the thing. Plant the seed. Yeah, it's all about the wood on this one. I'll tell you what, it's beautiful. Nice and light. Absolutely. Big old neck on there. Lots of real estate on that beast. Looks great, man. Something substantive to grab onto when you're engaging in rock craft. Okay, we might as well take a look at Yuri's here. Look at this. This is uh, absolutely out of control. Oh my God. This is the Peter the Great caster? Yes. So Fabergé? The, the, it was inspired by the Coronation Fabergé egg, which I'm not super hip on the history of the Fabergé egg. Well, they were, I think this should be, uh, is this? 
But Nicholas, the um, unfortunate, as he was known in retrospect, I believe, was given a Faberge egg upon his coronation. Ah, in 1897. Yes. Yes. Um, Some call him Nicholas the Second. I call him Nicholas the Unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> So, I mean, Yuri works all year on these guitars. And, um, you know, we've kind of just given Yuri the reins and said, you know, we know that you're going to create something absolutely amazing. So take Go. all year and, and do it. Run. And so on this guitar, I mean, you have all kinds of diamonds and rubies and gold leaf and inlays that are, you know, sparkled with 24 karat gold and... I mean, it is a sight to behold. I mean, it's something that's just on a totally different level. It's like fit for an oligarch. Am I right? Uh, yes, yes. Nicholas the unfortunate. Yes, if you will. I, I, he would be very fortunate to have this, though. <laughs> I think anyone... Might have turned gets, it all around for him. If he get into a time machine, get this guitar, maybe go back and... He'd be shredding. He could uh, maybe keep the Bolshevists at bay with a little spirited jam. Yeah, Who I knows? feel like, like, what kind of outfit would you need to, to uh, play I'd just guitar? go naked with it. Just you know straight, what I mean? Just, yeah, just, nice just buck. Yeah. Just buck naked, sporting that sweet golden lariat. Get pretty, it on. Pretty incredible. This is beautiful. Yes. Yuri is uh, on a different, different level. Absolutely. Okay, beautiful. next up. All right, check it out. Okay. This is the winery telly. So Ooh. Kyle McMillan, another one of our newer builders, was apprenticed to Yuri for a long time. And wow. he got some wood from uh, a vineyard in central California. Mm. Bellevue Vineyard. Um, and a cork. Got the cork pick guard. And he's got the stained cork oh, look volume, at that. volume and tone there. So this one's really for the cork snippers. Am I right or am I <laughs> exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. You can get snooty and just, you know, hints of black cherry and some oak in there. Behold. Beautiful roasted maple neck with a dark rosewood fretboard. And you've got the wine stain on the top. That's beautiful. Just really nice piece. Nice and light. Big old neck on there, too. Yeah. Oh, you got it? It's great. What's that? You're being very gentle with that guitar, I noticed. Well, you know what? Yeah. Something about, uh, I sense its value, <laughs> shall we say. Look at this multicolored All right, so, of the night. So this is a uh, Dennis. I don't know where he walked The Galuskinator, to. he ditched us. But he's got the Argyle, custom Argyle sparkle finish. I think this is something that he developed with our painter, custom shop painter, Jay. I need some socks like that, am I right? Argyle socks? That's right. It's sparkle like, finish? With that color scheme. Sparkle, oh. sparkle, sparkle Argyle socks, it could happen. This one's really cool. I mean, it's all about the sparkle on this one. Beautiful. Got what, the what sparkle is, control plate. Little... That looks like a Curtis Novak Hytron. Oh, cool. And then he's got a Curtis Novak double rail bridge here. Hey, there he is. Get over here. The Galuskinator. We see your Argyle renderings. When Talk I dig to it. Us about Does it this. make you feel hipper to be around it? Like, is your inner hipster I want socks. I want socks to match. Socks? This, this is, is so gorgeous, man. Socks. socks are important. I take my socks very seriously. Am I right or am I right? You are... Very right. The only problem is that your kids are always grabbing the pairs of socks and screwing up my whole sock game, right? All of a sudden, next thing you know, they're mixing and matching. Can't have it. The sock game. So next time when you design a guitar like this, you need to have socks to go with it, and they're going to they're gonna fly out the door. Oddly enough, I was going to, and I'm not kidding, I was going to include a Fez, but the Fez guy didn't make it in time. It's his first year at NAMM, and he got real busy. He was scared. So he's around here somewhere. i got to go introduce myself. But yeah, we were going to do a matching Fez. I like it. That's bold. That's pretty sweet. You a Fez guy? I'm more of a, the beanies man. What if you had a Fez? I'd wear it. Me too. I'd I have wear, one. And I I'd, wear, wear I'd wear the hell out of it. My daughter hates it. You know what? Sometimes you just got to ignore them. I do. And just say, you know what? Behold the Fez. Dig it. Yeah. Or don't. You'll be, Doesn't matter. You'll be riding my cool coattails. Uh, That's right. Friday, Forever child. So, um. <laughs> Beautiful. I dig it. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Right on, man. I like this angled uh, switch, yeah, you too. Know, if, I've, if I'm going to make a plate, you got to do something to it, and people like that angle, you know. It's slightly easier to grab. You don't have a whole lot of room in there, but uh, I moved it as much as it would let me. It's a nice touch, man. Awesome. Very cool. Right. I like it. Thanks, Thanks man. Get Jens alone. All right. Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> All right, so this is one of my Ooh, favorites. Look at this thing. Todd Krauss. Custom Swagger NOS in Arctic White. Look at this thing. Wow. That thing is badass. 
Look at that thing. So it's based on the swinger of limited Fender fame from 1969. You know, back in 1969, you could get away with calling guitar a swinger. Exactly. That was kind of on the menu back then. Yeah. So it's obviously got that unique offset body shape. Cool roasted flame mid neck, pearl block inlays. Resonates great. And it's kind of, there's there's kind of a weapon situation with this. So if yeah. you're playing out yeah, I think you could probably use it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, if you kind needed of, to. Kind of security these in and the, of itself. These uh, Curtis Novak silver yeah. foil Those pickups. Those are super cool looking. They look cool, man. They do indeed. Kind of love Todd's stuff. Killer, man. All right, so this is a Paul Waller carved top telly in OS. Mm. Two piece ash body. Look at those delicious P90s. Delicious P90s. Yeah, these are also Curtis Novak P90s. A lot of Cur Curtis, Curtis Novak, Novak making the scene here. He's all over the place. Obviously, with that trans green finish, looks really cool. Ooh, look at that. Roasted flame maple neck. Wow. Tortoise shell binding. That is a thing of beauty. Yeah, and this a is a Paul Waller bridge here. It's uh, basically a J bridge that he refashioned to uh, string through Telly, which beautiful. is really cool. Beautiful color as well. Yeah. Gold hardware. Cool. Sounds great. Nice, man. All right. And of course, Dale Wilson strikes again, ladies and gentlemen. Hold Last but not least, Tamo Ash Telly in OS. NOS lacquer finish, two-piece select ash body, the Tamo ash top, and that super bird's eye maple neck in the oh. back. That is a nice piece of wood. That is stunning. I think sometimes you just gotta let the wood do the talking, right? Yeah, you are correct, sir. Keep it simple. Forget about the neck pickup. This one's gorgeous. That is a specimen to behold. Yes. The power all of right. Wilson compels us all. Wanna check it out? Oh, yeah. Very cool. Nice and light. Beautiful. Looks good, man. Dale Wilson strikes again. Well, folks, listen. Justin's been very helpful with us. Let's hear for Justin. Yay! <laughs> the whole internet just exploded in riotous appreciation. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving us a little tour of this air, glorious area of the Fender Custom Shop. Here at NAMM 2020. Is that unbelievable? unbelievable. 2020. Who'd have thunk it? Gregory Cockery here with the Wildwood Crew. Keep tuning in. We got more coming. Out. <laughs>